Hi there, Jennifer. This is Cassidy Cash from Astro to Callahan. I am going to work through the problem you contacted us about over email. The problem you're asking about today is from Algebra 1. It's chapter 14 in the summary and review section of the textbook, number 12. We're going to work through all four parts of this problem, A through D. So I'm going to share over to my online whiteboard and we'll go through the problem together. That's not how I want to share this. I'm going to share over to my desktop. So hopefully you can still see me up in the corner there. So, um, okay, so you'll see on the whiteboard here, I have drawn as closely as I could the diagram that is in the book. My diagram is not precisely the same as what's in the book, so do still refer to what's in the textbook as you follow along. But basically, we're just gonna get started here. I wanna use pen, and I like purple, so let's write in purple. Okay, um, first we wanna get set up, and it says, okay, you've got a rectangle with two circles in it, and if this is the length, okay, we'll call that L, and this is the width, we'll call that W, it says that there's a couple things you can know about the length and the width. The length of the figure is two times the width, so we write that down. It also says that the length is two times the diameter of the circle. And remember that diameter goes all the way across the center of the circle, okay? So that would make sense, you've got two circles going all the way across, two times the diameter is equal to the length. So they're letting you know that the circles are identical. Now, letter A says, find the area of the rectangle if the radius of each circle is two. So that's what the book gives us. So I'm gonna change colors just to distinguish between what the book said and what you have to write down as a student. So, Radius is equal to two. Now you can ignore units for this problem or when I teach this class, I actually have the students use the word units just to make sure that as they're working through, they are acknowledging that this is a length, this is a distance, and it has a particular value. Even though the problem in the book hasn't told us what that value is, it's either inches or centimeters or miles or something like that. But since we don't know that, um, I put units, that's optional. But the radius is equal to two, and it wants you to find the area of a rectangle. Now, if you'll remember, the formula for the area of a rectangle is area equals length times width. So, okay, well, if the radius is equal to two, then the diameter is equal to two times two, because it takes two radiuses, radii, I think, to make a diameter. So if you were to split this diameter in half, this is an R and that's an R. So the diameter is equal to two times R. Since we were told the radius is two, that means the diameter is equal to four units. If diameter is equal to four units, then length is equal to two times four, which is eight. Well, if length is equal to eight, then in my area problem, I can write an eight right there. But that means I still don't know width, so I have to calculate the width. Well, this equation let us fill in that eight is equal to two times the width. Well, if eight is equal to two times the width, then I can divide both sides by two and find that, well, that means width is equal to four, which I can then bring back down here and plug into my area equation, putting a four right there, which means area is equal to 32 units squared. Continuing with the units, this right here is where it matters because area is actually a square unit because you've got eight units times four units is equal to 32 square units. If it was inches, the area would be 32 square inches, or if it was feet, it would be 32 square feet, which you'll remember when you're looking at houses to buy or you're calculating the square footage of your home. That's why it's called square footage, is because you're measuring the floor space in your home. And so just 
as far as carrying this lesson over into practical applications, I like to make sure that students are remembering as they work through these problems. The answer is not just 32, but 32 square units. So that's letter A. Now, letter B says, oh, okay, but do you really know what you're doing? Tell me what it equals when it's X. Now I'm gonna change colors one more time just to kind of keep everything organized on the page here. So you've got, okay, well, if R is equal to X, then we still plug it in the same way we did before, except instead of getting numbers for our answers, we're going to get equations, but it works the same way. So diameter is equal to two times R. If R is equal to W, then diameter, is, I mean, if R is equal to X, then diameter is equal to two X. Okay, so that's the diameter. If diameter is equal to 2x, then length is equal to 2 times 2x, which makes the length equal to 4x. Similarly, if we know that length is equal to 4x, then we use the other equation, and this is called substitution in algebra. We are substituting length equals 4x into our top equation here to solve for width, which is what we need to calculate area. So length is equal to two times W. We calculated that length is four X, that's equal to two times W. So that means that W is equal to four X divided by two or two X. And again, we carry that back down here to our equation and we say, okay, well I calculated that length is four X, and we're going from here. <laughs> Length is 4x and width is 2x. So that means the area when the radius is x is equal to 8x units squared. Okay? So that's the answer to letter B would be area equals 8x units squared with the unit squared being optional. That's a teacher's choice. I like to have my students include it. If you don't at home, that's fine. You don't have to. Um, it's just a, it's a logical real life step, which for me when I was learning was helpful. So I try to pass that on to my students, but you'll know your student best as to whether or not they need that at this point in their lesson. So that's letters A and B. Now they add some extra instructions before you go into letters C and D. So we're gonna read those. It says, find the green area in terms of pi if the radius of each circle is two and x. So they want you to keep the radius the same um, and calculate instead of the area of the whole thing, they want you to calculate, well, what is the area of just the green part. Now this is called um, area as a difference. You do this in algebra one where you calculate the area of a big piece and the area of little pieces inside that big piece. And then you subtract the area of the little pieces from the area of the big giant thing. So here in letters A and B, they've had you calculate the area of the big giant piece. Now we're gonna calculate the areas of the two circles using the radiuses that they've defined, and then we're going to subtract those equations from the area of the rectangle to get the answer. So whew, hang with me. This part gets a lot of letters, but you can do it. So let's walk through that. I've taken a screen capture of this page. So you guys, I will send that to you as a PDF download um, after the video. So you don't have to worry about writing all of these board notes down right now, but I am going to erase. I was going to refresh my whole page, but I think I won't. I need a big giant eraser, please. Thank you. And I'm going to erase all of these notes right here. Um, with the exception of those and yeah, so we'll we'll leave that information up there for right now. Okay, so now we want to say okay, let's use yet another color because why not? Letter C 
says, okay, well, find green area if radius equals two. Okay, well, we've kind of been set up here, but what that means we wanna do is we wanna take area of the rectangle minus two, Oh, I don't even know how I just did that. Apparently you can zoom out if you hit that button. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> there we go, that's better. Okay, so what you do is you take the area of the rectangle and then you subtract two times the area of one of the circles. And the reason you only subtract, the reason it's two times the area of one circle is because you've got two of them. So you have two circles and you want to calculate the area of one of them and then multiply it by two to account for the fact that you have two of them inside there. So let's take this one step at a time. First of all, we would need to calculate the area of the rectangle when, please change colors, thank you. You want to calculate the area of the rectangle when the radius is two. Well, we already did that in part A. So we can just put, I'm sorry, and it's here, in part A. So we can just put 32 right there, okay? Then we're gonna subtract two times the area of a circle. Which if you'll remember back, the area of a circle is equal to 2 pi r, pi r squared. You get to see exactly how I look things up. The circumference of a circle is 2 pi r, but area is pi r squared. Yeah, you're supposed to know that as a math teacher, and sometimes I have to look it up. So that's the circumference. Pi r squared is the area. Okay, so you've got pi, and by the way, as a student at home, it's totally okay for you to look back in your book and look up that formula or to use Wolfram Alpha or Google it like I just did when you're like, I need to know the formula for the area of a circle and I forgot. That doesn't mean you don't know math, it just means your brain's doing a lot of things and sometimes you gotta look up the formula. If you can use the formula, that's the important part. So here's what we're gonna do to use the formula today. You've got two times area of a circle. Area of a circle is pi r squared. So you've got 32 minus two times pi r squared. They defined that the r needed to be two and they told you to leave it in terms of pi. So you don't have to worry with this guy. It just becomes two times pi times two squared. Two squared is four. So this becomes two times four pi, which is eight pi. So you've got the area when radius is two, area equals 32 minus eight pi. Um, you might try to reduce that whether or not your book wants you to reduce it, I'm gonna to have to look in the solutions manual, but that is the answer to the problem um, in terms of pi. And when it says in terms of pi, it means you can leave pi in your answer. You don't have to multiply by 3.14 and get some kind of decimal number. They just want you to leave it just like this. And so that is the answer to letter C. Now. Um, again, I'm going to take a screen grab and send you the board notes as a PDF, um, but then I will, so you don't have to worry about writing that down, but let's move on to letter D. And I know this problem just seems to be so very long, uh, and it is, but you can do it. So, okay, we'll take that off. We're going to use that part again, but we'll erase this right now. We're done with that guy. We won't use him right now. So, okay. Let's go with, what color pencil would you like to use this time, class? We haven't used, brown is such an uncheerful color, but I think it's the only one I haven't used yet, so let's try that. All right, so now in letter D, they say, okay, well, what if the radius is equal to X? Well, then what is the area of the green 
part? Well, you're still going to do area of the whole rectangle minus two times area of one circle. We found in letter B that the area of the whole rectangle when the radius is x is equal to 8x units squared. So that's what goes here. You've got 8x units squared. Incidentally, the area of the rectangle and the area of the circle are both units squared. So throughout the problem, you're doing units squared minus units squared equals units squared. So for the purpose of writing this on the board, I'm not going to write units squared next to every numerical value for area that we use in this problem. I will add it at the end to my answer. So you've got the area of the rectangle we found in letter B to be 8x. So we put that right there. Now we've still got to find 2 times pi r squared again. Uh, so we've got pi, our r is x. So this becomes 2 times x squared pi, which is equal to 2x squared pi. And that's a nasty looking algebra expression, but it is the right one. So you would just do then, that means the whole equation is equal to 8x minus 2x squared pi. Now here, whether or not you want to try and factor out the x and say, you know, that means it is equal to 8 minus you know, and minus 2x uh, pi, or further that it's equal to 2x times 4 minus x pi. Um, to me, that's a teacher preference. I would be inclined to have you leave it like this. Your book may want you to reduce it all the way down to there. And again, I didn't look at the solution manual before I started this problem. Uh, so I'm not sure which way they want you to write your answer. But the important thing in this problem is that you understand a couple of key concepts. They want you to be able to either know or look up the area of a circle and then be able to plug in radius there and solve for the area of a circle. So that's one thing you're practicing in this problem. The other thing you're practicing in this problem is finding the area of a rectangle. The area of a rectangle equals length times width. The other thing you're practicing in this problem is the idea of substitution. If I tell you that this is true, can you take that and plug it into another math situation and solve for a third condition? So applying multiple equations and substitution is a third concept. The last concept you're practicing in this problem is the idea of area as a difference. When you want to find the area of the green part of this rectangle, it's a weird shape, but you can identify known shapes like a rectangle and two, two circles and use subtraction of the rectangle minus the two circles to find the area of the weird shape without having to do any advanced math calculations to find that. And that's the last concept that they're asking you to find. So whether you put your final answer as, you know, this equation, units squared, or that equation, units squared. I will leave it to your judgment as a teacher and conferring with the solutions manual and what they put as to which one you want to count as correct. But the point you want to get to here is whether or not you can apply all of these formulas correctly, you understand what's going on in the problem and why, and you stop randomly zooming in for your students. Um, and making them dizzy. So hopefully that answers your question. Again, when I send this video to you, I will also send the PDF of, of all the board notes, so you don't need to feel like you should write that down while you're watching the video, but you will probably want to review them afterwards. Go back to your book and either rework this problem on your own to see if you can get the answer correct, or find one that's similar in the rest of the summary and review and work this kind of problem again. Definitely practice area as a difference. If you find that you want to practice area as a difference, substitution, or finding the area of these shapes independently, with problems that are not listed in your textbook, please contact Ask Dr. Callahan support again. Part of what we can do for you is to send you over supplemental worksheets that help you practice this concept if you feel like you need to practice it further. Hopefully this answers your question. Thank you for reaching out to Ask Dr. Callahan support. You're doing great, keep going, and we're here for you if you have more questions. Talk to you later, bye-bye.